Welcome to the FY 2020 National Endowment for the Arts Challenge America webinar. This webinar is presented by the Challenge America specialists, myself, Mary Sellers, and Lara Holman Garitano. Challenge America offers support primarily to support small and mid sized organizations for projects that specifically extend the reach of the arts to underserved populations those whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by geography, ethnicity, economics, or disability. We fund arts projects. This means that you must propose a specific project in your application. Only three types of projects are eligible. Guest artist projects, collaborative marketing campaigns, and public arts projects. The guest artist project type refers to an arts event or events that will feature one or more guest artists. The guest artist is engaged specifically for the proposed project and is not considered a regular company member, board member, or staff of the applicant organization. The intention of this project type is to support the applicant organization in its community to engage with artists and present a public event that might not otherwise be accessible to audiences that have historically been underserved. Collaborative marketing campaigns are the second project type. They may include unified promotion projects and or cultural, tour and pro cultural tourism projects that incorporate the offerings of multiple institutions. Unified promotion is defined as a professional assessment, design, and or distribution of public relations and marketing tools such as calendars, websites, radio and television, brochures, rat cards, signage, wayfinding, etc. These are designed to benefit several local organizations in the community. Cultural tourism projects will market and promote cultural assets to enhance public engagement with arts and culture in communities and to populations that have been historically underserved. These campaigns should involve a partnership promoting the work of several organizations to extend the reach of the arts to underserved populations, not a promotional project for one single organization. Although many kinds of arts projects take place in the public realm, the public art project type is intended to, su to support primarily visual arts projects, which may be temporary or permanent, such as murals, sculptures, multimedia, or environmental art. These are developed through a meaningful community engagement process. Evidence of the community involvement should be apparent in the planning, design, or fabrication of the work, and should include a professional lead artist. All projects should be focused, distinct projects that take over limited periods of time and involved limited geographic areas. Within Challenge America, we fund a wide range of artistic disciplines, 14 of them to be exact. We support artist communities, dance, design, folk and traditional arts, literature, local arts agencies, media, museums, music, musical theater, opera, presenting and multidisciplinary works, theater, and visual arts. Applicants must be nonprofit, tax-exempt, 501c3 U.S. organizations, or units of state or local government, or federally recognized tribal communities or tribes. Applicants must have a three-year programming history of the arts at the time of the application deadline. Applica applicants must be in compliance with reporting requirements for any previous arts endowment award. Challenge America grants are for $10,000 only and funding is all or nothing. All grants require a one-to-one -one, non-federal cost share or match. This means the minimum project cost is $20,000. You may use any combination of cash and or in-kind third-party donations as your match. In-kind donations may include donated goods or services or contributions of volunteers. Organizations may submit only one application under these Challenge America guidelines. There are limited exceptions such as parent organizations that may also apply on behalf of their independent components separately identified units that are both administratively and programmatically distinct from the parent institution. A good example is a university with a university museum. Please contact us with questions about this exemption before preparing an application. 
Organizations may apply to Challenge America or artworks in one time per year. This means that you cannot submit an artworks application if you apply to Challenge America and vice versa. Organizations may apply for both the Challenge America grant and other funding opportunities such as Our Town. If you are interested in the artworks category, which welcomes projects that serve underserved audiences and offers applicants greater flexibility and the opportunity to apply for larger grants than Challenge America, check out the archived webinar for Challenge America applicants interested in applying to artworks in the webinar section of the arts.gov website. Artworks still has one more deadline this year on July 11th, so please contact us with questions about that. Please be aware we do not fund the following in Challenge America. The same organization, the parent or component, for more than three consecutive years, even if it is for different projects, general operating or seasonal support, facility construction, purchase or renovation, creation of new organizations, receptions or parties, projects that involve K-12 standards-based arts education, and lobbying. Look for a complete list in the We Do Not Fund section of the guidelines. Applications are reviewed on the basis of artistic excellence and artistic merit. Definitions of the review criteria are published in our guidelines. The Challenge America application deadline is April 11, 2019. You will be notified about the status of your application in December 2019, and projects may start as early as January 1, 2020. Now I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Lara, to talk about the logistics of submitting an application. Great. Thanks, Mary. Let's talk now about how to prepare and submit an application. Guidelines are published in the Apply for a Grant section of our website at arts.gov. Within that section, you will select Grants for Organizations. After selecting Challenge America, read the grant program description and browse through the various links in the To Apply box. After you've read all about the category, look near the bottom of the To Apply box. You'll want to read through how to prepare and submit an application, and then read the instructions for both Part 1 and Part 2. Submitting an application is a two-part process. You will interact with the Grants.gov website as well as our applicant portal. For Part 1, you will submit to Grants.gov. You will need to submit the Application for Federal Domestic Assistance short organizational form by the April 11th deadline. A few days after the Part 1 deadline, you'll then complete Part 2 by submitting the remainder of your application materials in our applicant portal between April 16th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time and April 23rd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. So now let's talk more specifically about both part one and part two of the process. For part one, you'll submit to grants.gov the application for federal domestic assistance short organizational form. This is a mandatory government-wide form that asks for basic information about your organization and your project. If you do not successfully submit this form, you will be unable to move on to part two. In order to use grants.gov, you must first obtain a dunce number from Dun and Bradstreet and then register with the System for Award Management, which is also known as SAM.gov. You should allow at least two weeks for SAM registration or renewal, and be sure that your organization is registered with Grants.gov as well. SAM.gov and Grants.gov are government systems, and registration in both systems is always free. If your registrations are incomplete, you will not be able to submit an application. A few days after the Grants.gov deadline, you'll be able to complete part two of your application. You will access our applicant portal to enter information into the Grant Application Form, or GAF, and upload items such as work samples. Again, the applicant portal will be open from April 16th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time through April 23rd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. Even though you won't have access to the applicant portal until these dates, all of the application questions and a list of items that you'll need to upload are available right now on our website. 
To access the instructions, select the Prepare Application Material PDF link in the To Apply box. You'll see every question that you'll need to answer, as well as screenshots of the form. And you can prepare these answers well ahead of the April 23rd deadline. Here are some tips to keep in mind as you prepare your application. First, carefully read the guidelines and instructions before you begin. And please keep the review criteria in mind as you prepare your application. We strongly encourage you to complete or renew your organization's grants.gov and SAM.gov registrations right away. Be sure to choose appropriate work samples. Work samples should relate directly to the proposed project. The guidelines describe the types of work samples that are required and the acceptable formats. Next, only upload the requested materials. We won't review additional things you may want to submit. Also, read through the items in the applicant resources box, such as a listing of recent grants, program evaluation resources, and sample application narratives from successful applicants. And finally, get your application ready early so you can enter information into the GAF once the applicant portal opens. We do not accept late applications. And then a few final tips. We strongly encourage you to submit part one of the application by April 2nd in case you encounter any difficulties. Likewise, complete and submit part two of the application outside of our applicant portal's heaviest hours of usage. Those are generally from 8 p.m. to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on the day of the deadline. And now in lieu of a question and answer conversation, we'll take some time to answer some of our frequently asked questions. If you have additional questions that we don't address here, please feel free to contact us using the information that is provided here, including our email address, which is challengeamerica at arts.gov. So our first frequently asked question is, I work for a social service organization, but we have an arts-based program as part of our mission, along with other services for our community. Am I eligible to apply for Challenge America? So the answer for this question um, would be that it sounds like you would be eligible. You would need to provide three years of arts programming examples in your application. Um, your organization does not have to only be working in the arts, but you need to have three years experiencing doing some type of arts programming. Um, so please be aware that the three years must be the most recent three years as specified in the application guidelines. So submit a representative list of your arts programmatic history for the past three years or seasons um, prior to the application deadline. So for this deadline, it would be um, for 2016, 2017, and 2018. Um, our second uh, frequently asked question is, uh, what do you mean by small and mid-sized organizations? So the NEA does not specifically define small and mid-size, uh, since those terms can mean different things in different places around the country. These labels have different meanings depending on the geographic location of an organization, the artistic discipline, um, i.e. the size of the theater lo located in Cincinnati may differ from the size of a museum in Nevada. Likewise, uh, the same operating budget size may be considered large or small depending on these um, same factors. So the Challenge America reviewers should be able to understand your organization within its own unique environment. Including area demographics um, can help your application illustrate that environment. So if you're unsure of whether your organization is a good fit, don't hesitate to reach out to our NEA staff member to discuss. Our third frequently asked question that we wanna share um, is I work for LGBTQ community in our city. Does this qualify as an underserved population? So per the federal guidelines, the endowment defines underserved using four criteria, economics, race, race slash ethnicity, disability, and geography. So your city's LGBTQ population would have to also fit into one of those four demographics. The same question was also asked about veterans. A community's veterans populations would also have to fit into one of those four demographics. The next frequently asked question that we get is, can you explain how we should be describing an underserved audience? 
So start, start by providing context for your reviewers to understand your community, its location, the people in it, the people your organization is serving, and the underserved audiences that you'll be focusing on for this grant. You should start doing that by including data, as I mentioned before, such as demographics, census information, free and reduced lunch statistics, and other quantifiable data to provide that information to our reviewers. Once you've, once you've identified that audience, then you'll want to explain how and why this project will engage with the underserved community. Are you going to be working with organizations who, are, who already have strong relationships with, this, with these individuals? Are you going to be bringing in guest artists who has a strong following from the underserved audience? Are these specific marketing or outreach activities that you're going to be doing to engage with the audience? It's important to remember that our reviewers are coming from all over the country from a variety of different experiences. This means that they will have likely not been to your community and so you will need to be sure to be clear about who you are reaching and how you're going to do that with this project. Another question we have is what do you mean by having geographically underserved audience? How do I explain that in the application? In order to use ge geography as your selected underserved audience, you should provide details con detailed context for your location. You can describe the area's population size or the distance from larger communities. In some cases, you actually might be the only organization within a few miles uh, to provide arts access, but the terrain may prevent people from attending these types of arts events. Or you may be in an area that looks very close to a major city. However, due to the time and cost transportation, arts are not accessible within your particular community. These are just a few examples of ways you can explain how your community is underserved due to geography. Sometimes geography is used in combination with other underserved audiences where you can use more quantifiable data. However, serving two audiences did not Require, is not required and does not necessarily make your application stronger. Another question that we have um, we get quite often is, I don't know my guest artist yet. And is that okay? So the answer is yes. We know that you are crafting an application for a project nearly a year before it can actually start. So not all of the details will be in place, but try to be as specific as you can. Reviewers want to know specific artists, productions, venues, distribution plans, etc. However, if you don't have the artist confirmed, then provide biographical information about your proposed artists or a short list of potential artists. You want to be clear that you have not confirmed the artist, but that the artist will be of a certain artistic standard. If you don't have your guest artist chosen yet, you should also explain the process that will be used for choosing the artist. For example, are you using an advisory board to review the applications or an application RFP process? Explain those details so the reviewers have a good idea of how you will be selecting quality art and project artistic excellence. If you don't know the artist and do not have a short list to provide examples, you can sub also submit artists you have worked with previously to show that you have a good record of selecting artists with artistic excellence. It's important to show the caliber of guest artist work in your submitted work samples. If your guest artist is not confirmed, submit samples for proposed artists as well as those you have worked with previously in a similar fashion. Do not provide only general publicity materials from your organization. Our work samples are meant to be specific for the artists that you're proposing. Another frequently asked question we get is whether your guest artist has to be physically present during the project. So the answer would be no. Your guest artist must be present for some, if not all, of the activities. They need to be directly engaged with the underserved audience. Having their work present is just having their work present is not enough. We want uh, to understand that they that if they are unable to attend events, then um, then that's okay, but we want to make sure that there is engagement with the underserved community. Another frequently asked question that we get often is, uh, I would like to receive funding to enhance my organization's marketing plan. Should I choose the collaborative, collaborative marketing campaign project type? 
So if it is just your own organization's marketing plan, then no, you should not choose this grant program. The collaborative marketing campaign project type supports community-wide activities and resources to enhance cultural activities and districts, including promotion, promoting the arts to underserved populations. Collaborative marketing campaign projects may include professional assessment, design, or distribution, public relation tools, as we mentioned earlier in the webinar, um, but it's really designed to benefit several local organizations as partners. This is a key factor to remember. Promotional projects for one single organization are not eligible. Also worth noting is that you do not have to be trying to reach people from outside your community. You can focus on an audience that is within your community, but has been historically underserved. You want to be as specific as possible to give the panelists a good sense of who will benefit from this marketing plan. Another frequently asked question is, I've never applied to the NEA before, should I consider applying? And we can say yes, absolutely. Uh, in, uh, in recent years, roughly 16 or more percent um, of the Challenge American grantees have been completely new to the NEA. All eligible applicant applications are uh, evaluated on the basis of artistic excellence and artistic merit. So note, however, that the federal grants management brings administrative responsibilities that some small budget organizations may find too taxing with their limited resources. So it's up to you to judge whether you are uh, ready to handle submitting an application and carrying out a project effectively. And uh, the NEA staff, uh, myself included, are more than happy to answer any of your questions if you are unsure if your organization has this capacity. Next, the next uh, frequently asked question that we have up is, does my project have to be new? And the answer is no, uh, projects do not have to be new. Excellent existing projects can be just as competitive as new activities. Keep the project description clear and concise. Uh, do not try to impress the re reviewers with 10 different things that your organization is working on currently. Keep the application focused to what you are asking the NEA to fund. One very important component of an application is, our, is the work samples that you have to submit. It uh, shares with our reviewers the artistic excellence that you bring to the project. So um, one question we get is, are there other items that we should upload into the applicant portal? So the answer to that would be no. The applicant portal is where you will be filling out the different narrative fields and also where you will upload the work samples that we require. You want to follow the directions on the work sample sizes and uh, how many you're supposed to be submitting. Those are all outlined in the instructions on the right side of the guidelines under the to apply box, the prepare application material, which we went over in the webinar earlier. Um, and just as you're considering your uploads, please remember that you want to submit work that is appropriate for your project. For example, if you're doing a visual arts project, please make sure to include slides from the artist you're working with. If you're going to be doing a music project, you want to be inclu including video or audio to prepare um, a reference point for your viewers to judge artistic excellence. So still photographs um, are, are nowhere near as effective for communicating that for uh, music and theater and for illustrating the excellence of performing arts projects um, such as a dance um, production. All right. Our next frequently asked question is, when should I start working on this? Um, and the answer is today, or hopefully you've already started looking at our guidelines. Um, so you can absolutely do that. We have the, a PDF copy of the grant application form is included um, in the Challenge America guidelines on our website, and it has all of the questions you'll be asked on the form. So you can start putting that information together um, I would suggest downloading that and looking at each question. It has the character counts um, for each section and exactly what you're going to be needing to pull together. So you can do that offline um, in preparation for submitting it for the deadline. Um, and also you want to make sure that your registration and contact information in both grants.gov and sam.gov are up to date. Um, if there's any hiccups with that, it's better to know sooner rather than later because it can often take 
weeks or months to resolve depending on the issue. And we've had, um, unfortunately, we've had applicants who have not been able to uh, submit um, because of this hiccup. So you want to make sure that that status is um, good to go. So um, one logistical question that we often get um, is about uh, whether you can apply as a fiscal agent. Um, and the answer is no. An eligible organization um, may not use a fiscal agent um, for the purpose of the application. The NEA stopped accepting those applications from fiscal agents in 2005. While you may not apply for and receive a grant on your own if you're not a 501c3 or don't fall into one of our eligibility uh, categories, you may participate in a project um, submitted by another partnering organization that is eligible. Remember, however, that each eligible organization is able to submit only one application. So your project or your participation in an applica applicant organization's project would have to be of sufficient priority that the eligible collaborating organization would be willing to use its own application for that request, that one application. The organization applying would also need to be the active partner in project activities. For example, not only just doing the bookkeeping, they would need to be substantially involved in the project. So I think that's uh, a good bit of the frequently asked questions that we receive from applicants. And um, again, we have our contact information available on the screen. Um, so please give us a call or shoot us an email. We would love to talk through um, any question you think is too silly. It is not. We are happy to, to answer any and all um, just to make sure that you have the best application possible that you can submit. Um, and again, if you have questions, feel free to give us a call. Um, thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.